I'm going to paint another sweetie today in my book. I hope you're doing well. I'm feeling all right, a little bit under the weather. I think I have food poisoning, but my spirits are high. I'm making a classic water color mistake here right out of the gate. I'm using dirty water and a dirty palette. That's going to dull the colors and make them muddy. And the real problem of doing that is that it makes the colors uncontrollable. So if this was a commissioned piece of someone's child or a loved one or the Queen of England, I'd be obligated artistically and ethically to throw this piece out and get some clean water and scrub my filthy palette. But since I'm doing this one more for the hounds of hell than the Queen of England, I shall press on. Please excuse my white stripes reference. I try to start painting as soon as possible after I wake up. I try to do it before anything else. I do get a cup of coffee first, and maybe I feed the cat if she's whining. But that's all an obstacle course to get to the painting as soon as possible. ASAP. G-T-T-P-A-S-A-P. Get to the painting as soon as possible. Write that down. The palette I'm using today is yellow ochre, a cadmium red, lizard and crimson, Burnt Sienna, Ivory Black, Ultramarine Blue, and Hooker's Green. The Hooker's Green isn't my favorite. It's a Cotman watercolor, which is a Windsor and Newton student grade color series. And most of the colors I've gotten from that series are very gummy and not pigmenty enough, I hate to say. But I will say that the Yellow Ochre is fine from that series. But the Hooker's Green, Alizarin Crimson, and Burnt Sienna weren't my favorites. But here's a little secret. There are people who do very fine work with Cotman watercolors. So, like most things, it comes back to the artist and not what they're using. I kept pushing through with the dirty water and I'm going to keep pushing through the inaccurate anatomy of the head. Here are some of my thoughts on studying anatomy versus just shooting from the hip, as my grandpa would say. I study anatomy. I think that learning anatomy is very important for any artist to understand. And you should learn it. And you should continuously learn it. But if struggling with anatomy is preventing you from drawing or painting something, then don't worry about anatomy and just draw or paint something. There's a time for being critical and really focusing on getting it right and understanding it, but there's also a time to just let go of all that and paint the eyes way too high up and way too small. And that's where we are here. A flip side on that thought though, is that when you understand anatomy, placing really small eyes way too high up on the head will be more effective. I can't say how effective my little eyes are here, but I can say pretty confidently that they're more effective than they would have been before I started learning anatomy at all, and could still be better and more effective if I understood anatomy better. In the art spirit, Henri says, use the ability you already have, and use it, use it, use it and make it develop itself. I tuned into a Comic-Con panel this year about style. One of the panelists was Jim Woodring. If you don't know Jim Woodring's work, do yourself a favor. Pause this video, order yourself a copy of the Frank book, or his newest book, which is called, And Now Sir, Is This Your Missing Gonad? I will link both in the description. He does these surreal, wordless comics that will transport you into an experiential world. And words really can't describe how these comics are. They are a purely visual phenomenon, purely visual story, and it truly is something that you have to see to believe. Anyways, on this Comic-Con panel, he was asked about his style and how it developed. And he said, as soon as I had anything that looked decent, I ran with it. 
as soon as I had something I could make work that was good enough. Even getting there was such a hard won victory. Once I had a tool that functioned at all, I just wanted to start using it. Of course there's always room for improvement, and even the masters are working on mastering further. And if you want to learn about anatomy, there are a lot of great free resources on YouTube and across the internet. Tons of books have been written on it. I might make a video about some book recommendations or YouTube channel recommendations in the future. But for now, just use what you got that works.